Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm reviewing Lego Ninjago Seabound set number 71756 Hydro Bounty. This set has 1,159 pieces. It's for ages 9 plus and it retails for $130 in the US. This was released on August 1st and I think it's really awesome. It's a very unique Ninjago set because the bounties are often red whether they're on land or in the air, but this one is white and a submarine. We might as well start with the villains because you have so many good guy minifigures in this set. This is Prince Kalmar. I love this figure. As you guys know, this is my third time taking a look at him because he comes in the three biggest sets, which I think is very nice. I love the new molds on him, especially the tentacle piece. It's not rubbery like past tentacle pieces. And I really like this purple, teal, and then the gold color combination. He's got a built-up weapon and a dual molded headpiece, and I just really like everything about this figure. We just get one Mare guard in this set, but again, I really like the color scheme here. Another dual molded headpiece that looks amazing, returning from the secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitzu theme. I also like their weapons because these guys just have like that black dragon hilt piece. And then we do have some gold shoulder armor and great torso and leg printing. Here's Scuba Kai. All of the ninja in this set are outfitted in the same style of scuba outfits using the same few new molds. We have that awesome new headpiece and then we also have this like rubberized oxygen tank and breathing apparatus that attaches at the hips giving you a couple of like 3D pockets and then it goes and wraps around the neck. Kai is one of the three ninja in this set to come with a hairpiece that is dual molded and returning from the jungle sub theme, or sorry, the island sub theme, I mean. I really, really love this dual molded hairpiece. I think it's really awesome, and he does have his same Ninjago movie alternate face. Next up, we've got Nia, who is exclusive to this set in her scuba outfit, and I really love this figure. I love the blue color used on her and her gunmetal gray arms. And the printing on her is just great as well. Um, it's really nice seeing her like in complete blue because I feel like a lot of her minifigures for the past few years have been predominantly like that gunmetal gray color. So I just like seeing her go back to being, you know, so watery. There's a closer look at her printing. Unfortunately, she doesn't come with a hairpiece. I really would have liked to have seen one for her, but she does have some pretty nice back printing and of course an alternate face. Jay is also looking pretty good. He's in just a regular blue compared to Nia's lighter colored blue, so I think that they actually look really, really nice together. I also just love the printing on him because he's got like all of this harness detailing on his front. Ninjago minifigures are so detailed and I really like to see it. And then he's got that same, you know, apparatus piece with the sword shoved through the oxygen tank. We do get a hair piece for him, again, dual molded with that little bandana. And then around the back, he has some nice back printing and his alternate face. The black and white color scheme looks great on Zane. However, one thing I don't love about all of these figures really is I think they just have a little bit too much color in them. That flame yellowish orange highlight color that's been used in this wave, it's really not my favorite. That's like a minor complaint, but I think that Zane's uh, headgear looks the best by far because that like blue dual molded goggle strip, it really just shows up much better on the white than it does on any of the other colors. This is one figure that could really use an alternate face though. I am super tired of, you know, like just having the angry face for him since Zane is never that angry. And all of the ninja have been reusing like the same face prints for about four years now and I'm just sick of them. Cole also looks pretty good. I actually really like his headgear piece, even though like you really cannot see the strips of trans blue along the black. I just think that it's really nice how it blends straight into the breathing apparatus, and of course his black and orange color scheme looks great as well. No hair piece for Cole. I think it's kind of a shame that you only get three hair pieces in this set. I really would have liked seeing hair for all of the ninja. And to round out the ninja, we have Lloyd, also a nice figure. Um, these scuba suits have really grown a lot on me since we first saw them. I especially just love this, like, uh, that, that piece that connects at the hips. There's Lloyd with his hair on. Um, again, I just really like those bandanas. I, I love that, like, they tried doing something new with the hair pieces. He does have an alternate face, and I just realized that I never even showed, like, the breathing apparatus piece, but this is what it looks like, and then this is where it attaches on the waist. And lastly, you do get two Woobots in this set. I have no idea what these things are, although I'm guessing that Sensei Wu did not go undersea with the ninja. 
They're pretty cool though. I mean, they just have minifigure legs stuck into like one of those bricks with four studs on the front. And then that is a printed uh, piece. And then they've got like the little rice hat. And like I said, you do get two of them. So I like that we have like some new allies for the ninja. And you do get a pair of flippers for all of these characters, which is great. Um, the ninja and the Wubots get black ones, and then the Mare Guard has a pair of teal ones. There's a great side build for Prince Kalmar in this set. It's like a chariot pulled by one of these new Stingray pieces. I took a look at this in the Temple of the Endless Sea review, but these did originate in LEGO City. It's new here in Aqua with this print though. There are a couple attachment points for minifigures right here. And this entire thing just like sits on the chariot, uh, if I can get it to attach, on just a couple of studs. And so it looks like it's pulling it along. I really love that. You do have some sticker detailing on the sides here. It follows that gold, black, and teal color scheme of all the other villain things. You've got some lightly adjustable flags here, which seem like it would kind of ruin how streamlined the whole thing is. And then all the way at the back, you do have a place to seat Prince Kalmar. I wish these gray pieces had been done in black, though, because I feel like that just interrupts the color scheme. And Prince Kalmar does have some reins to hold on to as well. Now, he doesn't fit in there super well with his trident, but I'll just turn his hand so he can hold the reins. And what I do is I just put his trident right through it, um, which looks kind of dumb. But there, that's the easiest way to get him to sit there. And again, that's just fantastic. Um, I really, really, really love this build. We get two more of these ninja mini submarines in this set. If you've been watching my Seabound reviews, you'll know that. I don't really like these. I think they have way too many colors going on because we've got black, gold, then the color scheme of the ninja, then a trans light blue canopy, and then the flame yellowish orange highlight. It's just too much. And then you also have the gray at the front. I just, I think that these look like a huge like mishmash of color schemes. I particularly hate the canopy. Um, I feel like these should have just been done in trans clear because having it be blue, I get that it might supposed to be, you know, like looking like it's underwater, but I, I just don't think it looks good with like the colors at all. I also don't like these because they can barely fit a ninja and there's no controls or anything. So you lean one back and then the cockpit can't even close all the way because it hits them in the face. I mean, it's a pretty minor complaint because it almost gets there, but I just don't like these things. They're not that great to me. We do have some spinner crowns at the back, which act as like a propeller. And then you can fold down these flags on the sides to get like, um, you know, like a slightly different look. That's nice, but again, I just, I don't know. I, I, I wish that so many pieces hadn't been like wasted on these things because you only get them for four of the ninja, not even like the five that I'm guessing would need it since I'm assuming that Nia is just swimming around. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe in the show there's only four of them, but I just think it's dumb to not have one for each ninja. And then before we get to the actual Hydro Bounty, we do have a couple of little things that can go inside. This is a stand for the three hair pieces. Um, I love that. I really like that Lyco included that. And I like seeing them all lined up here because then you can see how nice the dual molding is on all three of them. So I, I think it's really cute that Lyco's like, here, stare at our brand new beautiful hair pieces. You've also got two boxes here. Now these can actually be put in the ship, which we'll take a look at. But I really like these because they can be storage for all of like the tons and tons of extra flippers that you get in these sets. I've been storing my flippers in like a Ziploc from the other sets just because I've got like so many of them. But here you just have to like throw a few in a box, if I can pick them all up, and then just put these like two um, lid pieces on it. And then there you go. Now you can store your flippers easily and you don't have to be carting around a Ziploc. All right, well, here is the Hydro Bounty in all of its glory. This thing is extremely long, but I really love the color scheme on it. Um, I was very shocked, like, when I first saw it, because I was, like, really white. Like, again, I expect all Destiny's Bounty variations to still be red. But I think that the white and the black, it's just a really clean, nice look. And then you have the dark tan and gold accents that match each other very well. And this is a place where I think that having a kind of white transparent light blue color for like all of the canopies it works really well it doesn't look out of place here because that color actually matches with white whereas i don't think that that color matches with black for example up at the front we have a little bubble canopy and you also have the first of several of these new kind of like saw blade pieces you've also got some sticker detailing up here um along the side you have like these little not like almost like turrets actually, but they can't really move. These do have spring-loaded shooters in them, and I just shot Legacy Cole in the head with that. 
Um, I was building the new legacy set, so they're sitting like just out of view on the table. And then you've got more of these blades that come off to the side. These break off very easily, but honestly, it doesn't really annoy me because they look very nice. Also, they're not hard to tuck away, so like if I just remembered to tuck them away more, they wouldn't break as much. Along the side, we have this nice strip of black and a lot of these curved panel pieces to get, you know, like a proper like submarine hull appearance. And then on the sides, we have these really nice builds with the lanterns and then the um, dragon-like hilt pieces, as well as a printed round 2x2 two two piece with a dragon on it. The railings are made with long flex tube pieces, and this kind of curved section in the middle, like this cargo bay area, those are actually the new um, NASA Space Shuttle Discovery, like curved pieces. I built that set right after building this one, and it shocked me how similar they were in length, so that should give you an idea of just how big this thing is. And then we come to the cabin back here. Um, I love this cabin. The cabin and like interior spaces are like my favorite parts of like any set, really. But again, I think that the blue glass looks great here. These Black Panther like sword pieces used to kind of like cover up these rectangular um, transparent bricks. That's a very clever way to make like a porthole appearance. On top, we've got another one of those canopy pieces from the Boulder Blaster set, as well as a nice, what looks like almost like a shingled roof. Don't know how that works underwater, but you've got a periscope on, on top here as well. A sail that you can actually adjust the height of. This is a vinyl piece, not a cloth piece. So that's cool. Um, although, again, I wish that, like, LEGO included two of these so that we could see, like, you know, a front side of this instead of always seeing the back side of it from this angle. And then we do have these, like, powerful kind of, like, jet engine turbine things back here. And those have more of those gold blade pieces. And they also have some very large stickers. Here's the back. Um, I'll lift that sail out of the way a bit, but there is another bubble canopy back there, and there's also this, which activates a play feature. So I'm just going to go ahead and show that to you guys right now. If you pull that out, it makes these, like, engine turbine things, like, expand, and so I think that that's a pretty cool feature. Sadly, pushing it back in doesn't make them retract, but you can just kind of, like, push on them like that, and then pull it out again, and then they'll come out. As you can see, there's like a little bit of a delay because it's kind of like a weird build. Um, it's made using like strings and stuff. It was just, it was a very interesting mechanism to put together and not like any other Ninjago transformation feature I've seen. So here's what that looks like from the side. Hopefully that gives you a little, oh, that one didn't come out all the way. So you'll see what I'm seeing. Like it, it's a pretty cool feature, but like the sides don't move at exactly the same rate. Part of that may be my fault because I broke this one a bit earlier, but um, but yeah, it, it's, it's an interesting feature. It's just not one that I think is like particularly useful or anything. But you do have some really nice detail down there. I particularly, I particularly love how all of these like shield pieces are used to create this like nice, like kind of slanted nose. And then there is some detail that's exposed in there once those like kind of flaps are opened up. Since we're talking about play features, we might as well get right into one at the very front of the ship. This place where that little bubble canopy is, you can lift this up and there's actually space to put a minifigure inside on that tile. I'm not going to put a whole figure in there, I'm just going to put a Woobot because these also fit in all of the minifigure spaces. But basically, this entire front can just pull right off and that exposes some very nice detail down in there. I really love that, um, like I was not expecting so much mechanical detail in the front. But the point of this is that this isn't just the front of a ship. You can actually just move out some of these pieces on ball joints. You just have to mess around with a couple of click hinges. This thing was giving me a little bit of trouble earlier. But basically the point of this is that all of this becomes a little mini like underwater mech. Here we go, I had it facing the wrong way. So there is like some sticker detailing down there that actually kind of looks like eyes. You've got this blade at the front, so it can kind of, I guess, just charge at people like a unicorn. And the figure can like just barely look out of that bubble canopy. 
However, it doesn't work like that well. The legs are very small. Oh, I got it to stand up. That's like my first time I've gotten it to stand up. That's the next thing I was gonna say is that I can never get it to stand up. And then like the arms are like just these gigantic things with like blades on the inside. So these are on Mixel's ball joints, but the movement is a little bit restricted. And the same thing with the legs, they are on actual ball joints, but they are literally just like sticks. You can kind of move the base, but you're not really supposed to. So it's it can be hard to get this to pose, but I think it's just a cool feature. Like I wouldn't really play with this thing, but it looks good considering that it comes out of the front of the ship. All right, so there it is all folded up again. That's the front of it. That's where the legs tuck up into. Um, again, it is kind of fragile, uh, but I'm just, I I'm honestly just really impressed that the designer managed to fit something like this into like a place where I never would have expected it. Like I would never look at that and think that it would become a mech. So I think that that's really clever. All right, now it's time for my favorite part, the interior. This whole thing just lifts up, but as you can see, it gets stuck a lot on like the front of this cabin because it's always like right, it's like, it's like right up against it. So it does get stuck sometimes, which is irritating. The other irritating thing is that in this gigantic submarine, all of this is just empty open cargo space so that it can hold the smaller submarines. You do have some clips on the walls for weapons, um, actually a lot, so you've got two there, and then you've got two there on each side. These are like a couple of jumper spots to hold the submarines, as I mentioned, and then all the way back there, you can actually tuck some more cargo right in the back. That's where the crates that we saw earlier came in because they just slide along those little rails, and it can be kind of hard to get them to both fit because they're kind of like on the middle of the rail. So it's a bit of a tight squeeze, and I'm sorry, I feel like my hands are completely in the way, but they do slide right back there. And then that little space in the center, that is for the rack of hair. So the rack of hair, again, barely fits in there because it's so tight and I lost Lloyd somewhere. Kai's always has to be in the middle because of how tall it is, but you can get all three of them in there. All right, let me try that again. Like I said, it's not fun to fit things in here. Like, it's the right width. It's six studs wide, but it can barely fit just because Lego pieces do need, like, a little bit of flex room. So there, you can fit those two in there, and then I'll show you guys how to fit the submarines. The submarines have these little two-by-two two, um, plates on the bottom, round plates, and so they just attach onto those little jumpers. Once again, even though they're technically the right width, it is like a bit of a struggle to get them inside because everything you put in here just like scrapes along the sides. So you can barely fit them in if you shove a little bit. Um, and then they will attach to those jumpers. But yeah, it's, it's not fun to try to get these things in there. All right, so the two submarines have now been securely attached to the jumpers. You can see there's like no room between the propeller and the hair pieces there. So everything fits. It's just a super, super tight squeeze. And so I know that this thing is probably just a submarine transporter in the show. I haven't seen the new season. I'm a few behind, but I just don't like this. I mean, like this is a huge vehicle instead of like wasting all of this space on fitting two smaller vehicles. Imagine if you had like living space for the Ninja, like you would be able to fit, you'd be able to fit like easily like 10 minifigures down in here if the space was used better instead of just, you know, fitting in two submarines with two minifigures. However, that's where the cabin comes into play because the cabin is actually quite roomy. So you can take off the roof pretty easily. The one thing when you take off the roof though is that you need to turn up this canopy otherwise it's going to like hit on the ground and that's going to get all bent. That's kind of irritating to me as well but here's a closer look at the roof with that nice um, boulder blaster canopy. It creates like a very nice skylight and you can lift that up. So I really like that because again this is an underwater vehicle so the ninja can be in their scuba gear in the cabin and then you could pretend like they just swim out of the skylight if they need to go at a moment's notice. Inside, you've got a very nice amount of detail. There's a compass up front. Oops, not mean to hit the camera. This thing is very, very unwieldy. Um, you've got a nice ship's wheel. That's like, that's a huge thing to fit in here, but it's very cool. And then you've got like a little stool over there. You've also got two more control panels back here for other ninja to sit at. 
I kind of wish that those two by two tiles were switched around though. Like this is perfect to me because then you can have an, a ninja standing or sitting. Here a ninja can't stand because they're too close to the console. So I would just go ahead and switch those around. The other thing is that I wish we had actual seats here with backs. It's like a little thing, but I hate how Lego's been replacing actual seats with these like tiles because they just, they don't compare to having an actual chair for your minifigures. And then all the way at the back, um, there is one more seat with a couple more control panels, and that is where this canopy leads to. So I like that you have that extra seat back there because it's kind of like a rear like gunner position, even though there are no like cannons or anything on the back of this ship. All right, so there is the cabin crammed full of ninja. That's very nice, actually. But again, they barely fit. So like these guys will barely fit at the consoles because like the walls are so tight. Kai's head is like smashing into this like piece that goes over that seat. And the Woobots can't fit at the consoles that I've put Jay and Zane at because their hat is too wide for that like angled piece on the wall. So I'm glad that you can fit like so many figures in here. I just wish that they fit a little bit easier and that you didn't have to like literally remove every single accessory and position their heads and their hands so carefully because it just, I mean, yeah, they fit. It's just kind of like a pain in the butt to actually, you know, make it look good and everything. But so overall, I'm pretty happy with the amount of space that we have in this set because even though I feel like all of that is wasted to me, even though I really would have liked to have a proper interior there, you can still fit four people in the cabin, two people in the subs in here, and then one more person up front. So you have enough room for the entire ninja team, and you only have to have one Woobot swimming around outside. However, there's also this little like friend's leg holder piece right here. So you can put a figure there as well. I don't know if you're supposed to or not, but I just noticed that and I was like, okay, I mean, works works well enough for me. So you do technically have a place to put every single figure in this set if you don't want them, you know, like hanging around loosely. So here's one last look at the ship before we wrap this review up. Again, I really like the appearance of it, um, and it honestly does have a ton of playability as well. And here is what the cabin looks like with all the ninja in it when the roof is on. So again, I love that skylight. That's honestly like one of my favorite parts of the cabin, but the cabin's definitely my favorite area of the ship in general. Here are the extra pieces. It's basically just a ton of weapons. The box for this set is a typical, you know, like gigantic $120, $130 box size. You guys know I love the art for these sets. I've loved it ever since Ninjago went, you know, like vertical with the naming. We've got the sea serpent in the corner. On top, you've got character names and that great art of Nia in the top right corner. And then all the way at the back, it shows you everything you can do with this set. And I think that their transformed robot looks a lot better than mine. <laughs> Here's the instruction manual for this set. It's pretty big, as you would expect. And all the way at the back, we do have an ad for the other Seabound sets. I really like the way that looks. So overall, I think that this is a pretty awesome set. There's just like a lot of parts about it that I don't think are necessarily for me. That doesn't mean that they're bad, it just means that it's not like my thing. Like if I had this as a kid, I am sure I would love like everything about it. And again, like I said, even though I don't like that the entire like middle interior is just for holding submarines, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily a bad thing because there's plenty of space to put other minifigures, you know, like in the cabin. Like I'm really pleased about that. It's just that like as an adult fan, I'd rather have more minifigure interior space, but I'm sure kids would rather have, you know, like storage for submarines. The like kind of like the engine function at the back where like those flaps move out it's okay. I mean, that's just really fragile. Like, I break off those flaps, like, pretty much every single time I pick this thing up, and it's just really irritating to me, like, the way it's built. I just, I feel like it doesn't really add anything to the set. Like, I could have done without all of that at the back, and, I mean, without that, you would have a lot more interior space underneath the cabin. You'd have, like, the whole, like, the entire size of the cabin, you'd have that right underneath it to, you know, do whatever you wanted with. The cabin could have just been removable. So that's a function that I would get rid of, honestly, because I don't really see what it does for kids either. Like, it just pushes the engines out. It doesn't, like, it doesn't do anything particularly special. It's not particularly, like, cool, in my opinion. It's not, like, other Ninjago transformation features. It's not even, like, making the Destiny's Bounties engines, like, turn into flying mode. So I don't know. To me, that's just kind of useless. I didn't need that. But then we've got, like, the mech that comes out at the front. So, like, it's a good set. It's a good set. It's just that... 
I personally am probably going to modify it. Like if I ever get around to modifying any of these sets that I talk about modifying, I'd modify it to take out the submarine holding space. But, um, but again, that doesn't mean it's bad. In terms of value though, I don't think this is worth $130. Like honestly, I'd peg this at like 120, not less than 120, but like I don't see why it's 130. I feel like it does not need that extra $10 markup. So that's what I think about this set. If you like the look of it, I'm sure you're going to love it in person because, again, I pretty much just bought it because I liked how it looked, and I'm pr overall, I'm pretty happy even if it doesn't sound like I am. So that's it for today. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and check out my website, goldeninja3000.com, and I'll see you guys with more videos soon. Bye for now.